A few months ago, we looked at a study examining the risk of sedative hypnotic medications with regards to falls and fractures, and were surprised to find that sedative hypnotics, including benzodiazepines, might actually have a slight protective effect when it comes to these outcomes. This month, we're looking at another study that questions some commonly held beliefs about benzodiazepines, namely that long-term users of benzodiazepines and related drugs tend to escalate their use as they develop a tolerance to the medications. This is certainly something I was taught, and it was used as an argument against starting patients on benzodiazepines, even if the plan was for short-term use. Should we reconsider this advice? I'm Scott Beach, and you're listening to Quick Takes. Today's study was recently published in the American Journal of Psychiatry and is another Danish registry study. All adults aged 20 to 80 were followed for a period of 20 years in the prescription registry, and nearly 1 million incident prescriptions for benzodiazepine receptor agonists were identified, meaning that nearly a quarter of the adult population was prescribed one of these drugs at some point. This includes both benzos and so-called Z drugs. The eight most prescribed agents in the study were alprazolam, diazepam, midazolam, nitrazepam, oxazepam, triazolam, zopiclone, and zolpidem. On this list, nitrazepam was the only one that was unfamiliar to me. Turns out it's primarily used for sleep and has an intermediate duration of action similar to clonazepam. The authors divided the medications into three groups hypnotic benzodiazepines, which included midazolam, nitrazepam, and triazolam, anxiolytic benzodiazepines, which included alprazolam, diazepam, and oxazepam, and Z-drugs, which included zolpidem and zolpiclone. Now, it is worth noting that this list is somewhat different from what we'd likely see in the U.S. for the eight most commonly prescribed agents, with lorazepam, clonazepam, and chlordiazepoxide being the most obvious omissions. 15% of patients in the study who were prescribed one of these medications ended up using it for longer than a year, and 3% for longer than seven years. These rates were highest for Z drugs compared to benzos. Long-term use was actually lowest for anxiolytic benzodiazepines. Now, let's pause there for a second because I actually found that surprising. Only 15% of patients prescribed these medications were still using them at a year. And it turns out that is actually similar to numbers from the U.S. in prior studies. 46% of patients who were prescribed one of these medications in this study only filled the prescription once. Partly, this is related to the frequent use of benzodiazepines in palliative care. And the authors note that almost 50% of patients who started a benzodiazepine specifically for sleep died within the year. It may also suggest that physicians really are deprescribing benzodiazepines after initiating them. This makes me optimistic. I think it's easy for us to get frustrated by patients we see in the hospital setting who have been on benzos for years with no clear indication, but it's good to keep in mind that those individuals likely represent the exception to the rule. Of the 5% of individuals who remained on the medications for at least three years, there was no indication of dose escalation based on median dose most users actually de-escalated their dose over time. However, 7% of individuals remaining on the medication for at least three years did escalate doses above the recommended level, with psychiatric comorbidity and especially substance use disorders representing the main predictors of dose escalation. This seems like a good reminder that for patients with a history of substance use disorders and perhaps especially alcohol use disorder, caution should be exercised when deciding whether to start a benzodiazepine. I think many of us would consider active substance use to be an absolute contraindication to a benzodiazepine or Z-drug prescription, and a history of substance use disorders to be a relative contraindication. I've recently heard an argument made that using benzodiazepines to treat anxiety in patients with active alcohol use disorder might constitute a harm reduction strategy. But this study suggests that such patients are actually at the highest risk for dose escalation and are probably not ideal candidates for a benzodiazepine. As psychiatrists, we have to ensure that strategies undertaken with the best of intentions in a harm reduction approach do not unintentionally cause greater harm. And this is a good example of evidence arguing against a specific harm reduction practice. So why is this study a big deal? Well, many countries, including Denmark and the U.S., have established guidelines intended to restrict prescription of benzodiazepine-related medications to short-term use, specifically because of concerns about tolerance and dependence developing over longer periods. 
In 2020, the FDA issued a boxed warning for all benzodiazepines, highlighting the risk for misuse, abuse, and dependence. This study suggests that these concerns might actually be overblown. The authors do acknowledge the possibility that it was guidelines like the ones in Denmark about prescribing benzodiazepines that actually influenced the study results, but they argue that such guidelines are outdated and unlikely to apply to patients across the board. They also point out that when benzos and Z drugs are restricted, prescriptions for other sedating agents, including, for example, quetiapine, increase. These medications also have significant side effects and are being used off-label, meaning that in many cases they lack rigorous evidence for the prescribed indication. The authors further argue that benzodiazepines are one of the safest classes of medications and that rigorously focusing on restricting that class alone is an outdated approach. Instead, they advocate for a return to the evidence base and suggest that guidelines focus on relative and absolute contraindications for specific groups of patients rather than on an outright ban of classes. So, as prescribers, what should be our approach? This study suggests that benzodiazepines and Z drugs represent a very reasonable aspect of our armamentarium for anxiety and sleep and can be used safely. For most patients, it seems we should aim to use benzodiazepines as a short-term strategy. For the patient with panic disorder, for example, starting a benzodiazepine during SSRI initiation may help to mitigate early SSRI-induced jitteriness and anxiety, target panic more quickly, and allow patients to return to functioning more quickly. As the SSRI takes effect, the benzodiazepine can be gradually tapered over a period of weeks to months. Prescribers should keep in mind, however, that there may be a small subset of patients for whom long-term benzo use may make sense, either for anxiety or for sleep. These may include patients with panic disorder who cannot tolerate antidepressants, for example, and who live in a location where CBT is not available or difficult to access. Many such patients may do excellently on a small dose of benzodiazepine long-term, without side effects and without requiring dose escalation. Provided they don't have other contraindications to using benzodiazepines, we shouldn't feel compelled to repeatedly try to taper their benzodiazepine just because of a theoretical concern about tolerance or dose escalation. At the end of the day, the key is to remember that each prescribing decision is a risk-benefit analysis, and we'll do better by our patients if we think about them as individuals rather than taking dogmatic approaches to certain medications or classes. (laughs) 